Gotta get my hair cut. Hi, everybody. Right, Recruiting. You, this guy always talks when I'm introducing the show. Usually, he before I say a word, he's talking, okay? But anyway, it's the Recruiting the Animals show. It's December 7th, 2022. And the guy who loves to interrupt me, I love to have him here. MarioTheRecruiter.com. Yo. Yeah! Okay, also, whom you can't see, he said he uh, becomes uh, introverted uh, or maybe shy in the wintertime is Ivan Gulenko. He is the creator of his own applicant tracking system. He's a recruiter. So it's created by a recruiter's hands. It's called Clang, K L A N G dot S O. <laughs> anyway, he's here. Go check it out. Okay. It's worth, it's worth taking a look at. Okay. I know there's a million of them, but this guy is a hands on recruiter. Okay. And uh, you know what? I even said something a few months ago that I realized was true. This isn't about recruiting necessarily, but I notice it all the time. He said, look, you know, sometimes you're going to make purchases and you have buyer's remorse. You know, you say, why did I buy that? Okay. And then later on, you realize that it was a worthwhile purchase or something came in useful. Didn't you say that, Ivan? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. I, like, I remember. You, like, Twitter I remember. Or... Well, that becomes like, true. There's lots take of it times, out. Sometimes bad things happen that turn out to be worthwhile in the long run. That's so true. don't jump to conclusions. I'm not saying if you lose your arm in a traffic accident, that's going to be a good thing. No, I don't think so. Okay. But uh, anyway, okay. So let's get to the show. Uh, I won't do Okay. You know what? Here's a, a, something I saw that I found surprising. This French recruiter on another recruiting group, he said, we're a French agency and uh, we're doing great business here in Europe, but I've been living in the U.S. and I've got to, you know, I was living in the U.S. and I've got to admit, I miss the warm, chatty American people. I thought they hate Americans. He wants to start up a branch in the United States. Uh, Zeni, you guys are both uh, not from North America. Do you find uh, yeah. the Americans are, are different from other people, more friendly or anything like yeah. that? They're way yeah. more direct. What does that mean? I mean, they see, it's very simple. They don't beat around the bush, okay? If they're interested in moving forward, they tell us, yeah, we're interested. If not, no. And you cannot, you know, try to convince them not to do something, like to take up a job or to listen to a call if they're not interested. Plus, they're pretty chatty. I like Americans. Okay. Easy and, to and talk with. Give me an example of somewhere else that where they're not like that. India. Well, what happens? It's different. It's different in the sense that you can't believe a word they say especially with candidates. Okay, uh, that's different than saying they still might be chatty, though. I mean, they, they, it depends on the person. See, in, in, in the Indian market, okay, people are not that chatty, all right? They don't have the nature of chatting a lot with people on the phone, mm -hmm. unless, you get, unless you know them personally. Okay. Americans are a bit more open-minded and a bit more, you can talk with them. Ivan, do you have anything to say? You've recruited uh, 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 the odd time in the United States, haven't you? Is he gone already? Okay. I have no clue. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll move. I'll move on. I. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm in Canada. Okay. I. I well, even Canada is pretty I nice. I think in the southern United States, uh, when uh, they might be a little, the secretaries of the uh, gatekeepers might be a little more friendly than than some other places. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They are more. No. They are basically polite, at least. Uh huh. I mean, okay. I do cold calling, right? I'll be calling secretaries all the time. Mm -hmm. And to get past them, I'd use all sorts of tricks. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, they're pretty polite. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't, I can't. At least they're like, "I'm sorry, I can't put you through." All right, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Okay. At least better than get lost. Oh, do people say get lost anywhere? Why I not? So. Why not? One, one. I, I called a person a few days back. He has, he, he just picked up the phone. He listened. I asked him, "Would you give me thirty seconds to talk?" He said, "I have no time. I just wanted to ask him why the hell do you pick up the phone? Then you moron." <laughs> Okay. But I thought, okay, he's an old Didn't guy. Didn't you just he's tell I didn't just tell you don't use that word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. They're gonna come after me anyway. What's gonna okay. change? Well, they'll come after me. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. idiot. Then I rephrase it, idiot. Yeah, oh, that's a lot that. better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about this? Um, can you succeed as a recruiter if you talk in a monotone? You'd be probably, Neither of us talk the, in monotones. Ivan's a little closer. Ivan, Ivan, you're still not here, eh? He's no. not here. 
Okay, he, he would he, probably he, be the most. He, boring he showed up long enough problem. that I did the ad for his, uh, for his product. Okay, what about <laughs> the smart. monotone? Yeah, you'd be the most boring recruit on the planet. No one will want to talk to you. I don't think. It I makes mean, see, difference. people. Uh, you know, it, it does. Imagine this. Hi, is this Adam? Adam, I'm calling you for a <laughs> job opportunity. Good. Would you be interested that. in this role based out of this and this and this and dash, dash, dash? Would you give me 30 seconds to talk a little bit more about the opportunity? You know how it's, dull it sounds? Yeah, it sounds like you've got some kind of uh, chat uh, app or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, look at this way. Hey, Adam, how are you doing? You got 30 seconds to talk about an opportunity I represent for? Okay, let's talk. It okay. has much more flair, much more interest. You're actually talking with the candidate. I mean, mm -hmm. I use this with candidates. With uh, prospective clients, I don't go, how are you doing? Who the hell cares? With the candidate, at least I want to know how they're doing. I got to admit, it, your chatty voice sounded better, but I, yeah. I don't think it makes a, a difference in the end. Uh, my, I, have a, I have a friend who, uh, he used to work in a, in a, a big a recruiting office and he's a fa fabulous recruiter. Mm. And, but he showed, he said, you see her, her name was Barb. I, I won't mention her last name. She was a cold fish, okay? Mm. Her person, she, he said she was the most successful recruiter in the office. Was she hot? No. <laughs> no, no. In fact, she was on the far side. I hate to say it, okay? She was, she was not young either, okay? She was on the far side of middle mind. age, okay? So she has no charm. Uh, Animal, there are always exceptions to the rule. Well, how do you know that's an exception, okay? It could, she could be an exception because I've seen most of the best recruiters we have on here Okay, I'm not a great recruiter. I'm just a normal recruiter. Okay, but most of the best guys who build the most, they are pretty chatty folks. Yeah. Tell me one guy who has come on here who's not a chatty person. Or on doesn't know show? to change their tone. Uh, yeah, Ivan, Ivan's not a chatty person, and I think he's pretty successful. He's a pretty successful recruiter, but he also is... An, is, is see, you need to understand, their culture is more, more um, cut and right in how they talk. Europeans are generally not very chatty. Okay, he's in Switzerland for the German he, he's population. An, he's under the European... Union, EU. Now he's not only recruiting in Switzerland in the, the German-speaking community. Right, and that's even worse. That's Germans are most cut and right. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's no whole bar. He's, he's my friend, okay? But, okay, I, I'm not responsible for what you, he You're says. not responsible for okay. what I say, okay? I speak out of free speech. Okay. You can't censor me like Andrew Tate. I have what, nowhere to be What censored. about this? Uh, a candidate complained. She said she went to a, a company that brags about their inclusiveness. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I, I know I'm, I'm in a bad territory with you here. Anyway, uh, she said she's got a disability that makes it so she can't uh, sit for a really long time. The interview was four hours long, planned four hours. She said, I'd like to break it up into two hours and two hours, and they refused. She thought that was outrageous. I think she's probably right. What do you think? She's hundred percent right. That's a moronic company you don't want to work for. Okay, and yet they brag about their inclusiveness. They're, okay? they're, they're about as in inclusive as I'm exclusive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In fact, for four hours, uh, would it be wrong for a person to say, let's say they're in a video interview like this, to say, "Look, I got to go to the washroom <laughs> for an hour. Or two. I got to go to the washroom." Okay. Imagine they're in the middle of a serious discussion. They can say, "Hey, I got to pee." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Okay. I mean, see, this is this is a typical example of company just talking the talk, but yeah. not walking the walk. Uh -huh. She actually escaped from a problem because if she had a problem with sitting down, okay, they could if they're really an inclusive company, they can include a standing desk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. If right. they're really inclusive, they're not. Yeah. Those are not said, companies she, you want to work with. She said she could sit, just not for these. You know, four hours is a long time. Okay. That's Obviously, a... man. Even I can't sit for four hours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're a young, healthy fellow. Okay. Uh, yeah, but um, if, if we can't sit for four hours, how the hell can you expect her to sit yeah, on the okay, hot with, seat? Whatever her back problem is or whatever yeah. it might be. Next, it's not decent. Next question. Okay. I, 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 you know, this sounds good, but I don't know what it means. He says, Please. relationships are everything. Having three intentional networking conversations a week for a year will change your life. First of all, what's an intentional networking conversation? Uh, what do you think? What, is he, what do you think he means by that? Are you calling your old candidates or your people you've spoken to before and just checking up with them? Or are you calling new people and just introducing yourself? What Even I'm mean? confused. He's a recruiter. I got to say, the guy who wrote this on Twitter 
he's he's a recruiter. He's not only a recruiter, he's a popular recruiter. Lots of people like him. Okay. But he has a point. Oh, uh, that's one fifty-two weeks into three is like one fifty-six conversations. At least forty will pan out in a favor. Say one hundred and fifty. Give him some time yeah. off. Yeah. All the way Yo, from Stephen. Scotland. Yeah. Hey, Stephen O'Donnell. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to be seen. What's your it's a long time? What's your URL? Uh, no pocket recruiter. I'm not pocket recruiter anymore. Uh, tatech.org. Tatech.org. Why the uh, org? Do you consider yourself an educational institution? It's an organization. It's a membership club for uh, technology companies and recruitment. But I thought you were teaching uh, companies the last time we spoke uh, how to do video presentations. Uh, well, that, 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 that was a bit of a pivot during the pandemic. Mm. So what yeah. are you doing now? Anything? So, well, the, the TA Tech is a membership organization for technology companies and job boards uh, all over the world. Uh huh. Mostly North America. Uh, maybe okay. two thousand. I, I don't understand everybody, but go to tatech.org. Okay. Yeah. We haven't seen him here for a long time. However, yeah. I posted a video last week that you were that you were in, and you know what? It was uh, promoting Michael G. Cox and Richard Rosen for the uh, contest for Forbes magazine. Go to coldcallrecruiter.com. You can register, and then they'll send you an invitation to come back and vote for Rich. And Mike, okay, Rich is cornerstonesearch.com. You have to vote for them by their companies. And Michael G. Cox is ZagWorks, Z-A-G hyphen W-O-R-X, okay? So, Stephen, wouldn't you agree with me that that's a ridiculous name? He's a smart guy. If you go to the salesrecruiter.com, <laughs> it'll take you to his LinkedIn but would you agree with me? It's such a bizarre name. I mean, what's the point? Uh, am I, I right learned a that? long time ago that it was uh, it was it was uh, safest to always agree with you. Okay. But, okay. But Zag, but, Zagworks does sound a bit uh, off the wall. The odd spelling and stuff like that. Yeah, I need people to agree with me about this domain name thing because I believe it's important. Okay. I I like uh, company names and domain names that say what they are. Give me an example. Well, uh, uh. uh Sweet TA popsicle tech. company. So okay. TA Tech is talent acquisition technology. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, what well, did you? So the question we're asking before we move on, Steve. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I don't I don't think I gave uh, Mario a chance to answer. So you can come. This guy said, if you have three intentional, intentional uh, networking uh, calls, uh, conversations a week for a year, it's going to change your life. Does that mean anything to you? He's a recruiter. Does that mean anything? Let me give you an example. Uh, uh, and it's, it's an old story. I always end up telling stories from way back. When I was 18, I was selling telesales, uh, I was selling advertising in the local police in-house magazine uh, called The Guardian. Anyway, I was selling this and uh, I'd get bored through the week. So what I did was I got the code for New York, 001212, handed on some random numbers, and I would canvas for friends uh, in New York uh, just to uh, just, just, just to while away the time. I, I made friends uh, over, the, over that call when I was 18 that I still have today. Uh, Hold so on, you call people you didn't know out of the blue and say, hi, my name's Stephen, I'm in... I mean, you're in Glasgow, right? I, I literally said, my name's Stephen. I'm in my office in Glasgow. I'm a bit bored. I thought I'd give you a call. How are you doing? And uh, I, and most people would hang up. Some people stayed on the call. They were curious. And uh, and some of them are still friends of mine today. I was in New York uh, last month, and uh, I met up with, uh, with a couple of them. Really? Okay, Mario, let's follow up with him on this. So let's switch this That's to recruiting. Something. Let's switch this to recruiting first contacts. Because Mario was saying some, you know, he called a guy uh, and the guy said, he said to the guy, just give me 30 seconds of your time. He said, I don't have 30 seconds for you. So Mario said, what do you even pick up the phone for if you don't have 30 seconds? <laughs> what, what would you recommend uh, as, as an initial uh, contact uh, to a stranger, to re you're recruiting them? To me, it's a stranger. Yeah, you're recruiting somebody and you, you, what's your, your, you get on the phone with them. Or maybe you don't recommend the phone anymore, but what's your first contact? Well, if you were on the phone, what would your first words to this person? They say, hello. 
Okay, so so first of all, just just to by way of context, if you phone someone and tell them why you're phoning them, then that's what's in it for you. That's not what's in it for them. So you need to lead with something that's going to catch their attention. Uh, and in order to do that, you should have done a bit of homework on them. So it might be you've read the LinkedIn, it might be you you've seen their CV or the resume, uh, but you need to come in with something that's of, of interest to them. So. Uh, I've got some information about your uh, your your competitors, uh, or I've got uh, information on anything else that's to do with your industry sector. So if you've got something that's going to catch their attention in the first place, then that's what's in it for them. That's why they would go, okay, tell me more. Uh, you know what? You the, I could tell that from the way he did this thing when he was 18, this is a different person, okay? The yeah. kind of person. He's out in the stratosphere. He'll call strangers in another True. country and chat to them. And he doesn't care if they think he's a weirdo or hang up on them, okay? But yeah. yet, when you're calling these recruiters or candidates and you're saying, hey, I've got something you want to know, uh, I don't know. Well, uh, well yeah, yeah I, 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 I get it. I get it. So my inclination when someone phones me is – uh, either I want to hang up straight away or I want to mess around with the person on the other line. Other line. Now, I know that not everyone is, is the same as me. I know that people are, are, are different. And most people are going, oh, you're trying to sell something. And as soon as you say, I'm not trying to sell something, straight away they know you're trying to sell something. So, yeah, yeah you, 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 you can't do that. And if you're, if you're contacting people who are regularly being contacted in Canvas for jobs, then they'll have heard, they'll have heard the script on a regular basis. So... Uh, you got to have something that's personal to them. Uh, and it might be, uh, you know, recruit an animal. I, I listened to your show last week. I saw your show last week. Mario was fantastic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, can you tell me more about the people that come on your show? So if you ask the person about that, rather than go, go in with a pitch, then uh, that might be it. You might be asking for advice. You might mm -hmm. be asking for advice. Can I ask a question uh, about the, uh, the company that you work for or used to work for or someone that was a colleague? Uh, or it might be that you're looking for a reference. Can I have a reference on a candidate? And it might be totally made up. Uh, it might be any number of things, but you're looking for them to, in a polite way, uh, give you something for nothing. Uh, okay, and, so this uh, would be as an entree for those three intentional networking calls. That doesn't sound like a, a, an, in, uh, an introduction to a recruiting call when you're actually wanting yeah. to recruit somebody. It seems like deceptive. And the, this guy's trying to play a bait and switch with me. First, he asks for a referral, and then the real conversation comes comes in. I, I don't I don't know. That. So as, uh, well, you, you know, as a recruiter, you when you speak with a candidate that turns out not to be ideal for the, for the, for the job you're speaking about, uh, and maybe you knew that already, but you want to ask them about somebody else. Or, you know, where else are you applying to right. right now? Uh, if you do it badly, and uh, it's quite common, then they'll know that that was the reason for the call in the first place. Uh, and you just look like a schmuck. You, 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 you're, you're looking to squeeze them for information, and you weren't interested in them at all. Uh, so uh, it, it's it's tricky to do, and you need to be quite diplomatic about doing it. You sound like uh, Sean Connery today. Go ahead, Mario. <laughs> Actually, Stephen, uh, when you call, I mean, before we call any candidates, we do yep. our best to vet if they're a fit for the role. So, yep. I mean, most of the time we are very direct when we talk to them. I said, hey, I'm calling with regards to an opportunity. You want to yep. hear about it or not? I mean, that's the best way to go about it as per my understanding. Uh, I believe in radical honesty on the call without going for anything here and there. Just would you be interested in hearing more about the opportunity? I mean, that seems to work for us, but... Uh, I, I, I find with radical honesty, uh, in fact, it can be quite disarming if someone says, yeah. look, I, I'm phoning you about a job. I, 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 I think you'd be interested in this. Let me tell you yeah. more. I got to tell you, you know, sometimes they, those guys who tell you to hypnotize your potential uh, candidates. Oh, God, they're full of shit. No, no, but he did that to me. Just this idea that he was 18 years old calling people in New York from Scotland my mind just goes into another strategy. Stephen, can I ask I you a question? It, okay. Can I can yeah. ask you a question, Stephen. How do you get into recruiting? How do I get into recruiting? Yeah. Uh, I went and in, went and registered with a, a recruitment agency. I was a sales guy selling fax machines. Yeah, uh, you got it. He was a sales uh, guy. He must have been a sales guy from the get go. Well, naturally I, born salesman. Well, no, hold on. I, I I sold advertising in magazines for about eighteen months. I then sold cable TV. To so, people in their homes. So can I, for, I can ask you a question? How do you sell fax machines? 
so can I ask you a question? How do you sell initially? On the phone, right? Yes. Okay. So no, he's he used to talk today, on the phone. but uh, lots of people no, say. No, no, no. I'm talking initially no when he started. The phone is no good. Not oh, today. When not he start, today. Oh, when I'm he started. When he started. Okay. okay. See, yeah. you are, they, they have a saying, right? We are the uh, sum of all our experiences and all our uh, thought processes, everything. Okay. So yeah. when he started at 18, he could have, he, I, I totally agree. I can see that he could have easily been calling people and making friends on the phone. Yeah. Don't yeah, get me wrong. In, in, in terms of messing around phone, we we would also phone sex lines in New York as well, uh, because you know it was it was on the company's phone lines, so uh -huh. we would do that as well. Yeah, you okay. got a good sense of humor too. What else? What doing? about what about uh, today? Uh, you know, some people say I, I never phone people. It's all either text or email for first contact. Do you have yeah. any preference? I, I, so I was called this morning out of the blue and I almost jumped out of my skin because it never happens. Uh, and it was very welcome. Uh, it was a fellow called uh, uh, Laurie Coop uh, who runs a company called Aimwell in uh, Belgium. And uh, uh, he just called out of the blue, which was great. And it was in between other calls that had been scheduled. Uh, I, I love a call out of the blue. I phone people out of the blue all the time because frankly, I'm trying to get them off guard. Okay. So you I, so I, so okay so he's endorsing the phone okay everybody hey, even I, I endorse the phone I mean without the phone we can't do anything it took me so long to get over my fear of cold calling I have finally been got rid of that fear How? and today I call nonstop bang through that fear How did you get bang over through it? that I banged through it really yeah okay. I am not joking listening I, you know when I started the show I came on initially I had the fear of cold calling not candidates prospective clients. Okay. And that's why I was looking for option, uh, other business development services. Okay. Though I was bringing in my own business, it was mostly through email. Now I'm smashing the phone lines all the time. Okay. Let me, uh, hi, foodindustryrecruiter.com. Ernie. Ernie, welcome back. Okay. The purple Barney. Okay. But let me ask Steve, <laughs> I'm going to sort of make Steve the quasi guest because we haven't seen him for a long yeah. time. And he is a different sort of person. Everyone can tell. If you can't tell, there's something wrong with you. Okay. Uh, okay. But, but uh, Richie Rosen always tells us, Steve, that calling uh, clients for business development is the exact same as calling people you want to recruit candidates. So, uh, uh, Mario just said it's di it's di he felt it was different. Okay, so I told him I want to ask him a question. He disappears. Okay, he's got. I'll ask Ernie. Are you in agreement, Ernie, with Rich that they're both the same thing? That it puts both the same thing. The what happened to your hair? <laughs> <laughs> I, had a hat, I had a hat on and they just came in. <laughs> Okay. It's cold over there. About, don't worry about that. No yeah, one's going to see you on this show. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what about what he just said? He 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 wasn't afraid. That's what it sounds like. He wasn't afraid to yeah, cold call yeah. candidates, but he was afraid to cold call business uh, businesses looking for for business. What do you say, Rich? Is it the same thing? I, I think it's the same thing. Not Rich. Call, I mean Ernie. Sorry. Yeah, Colin's Colin's calling. You know, but uh, business development can be tough. Yeah. Business. That's what gets people nervous. That's what Rich exactly. says. He says there, people are afraid. He says, because when you call the candidate, you're offering something. When you're calling yeah. the business, you want something. Is that is that what's going on? Exactly. Do, that it, is it, the problem. It's wanting, it's wanting something, but not knowing how to bring it up, not knowing how to work it in. True. You, feel, you feel like you're bothering them. And, no, I don't feel like I'm bothering them. I have no kindness. Well, but I mean, people, people think that they're, I, th I think usually there's a fear because they're calling up. They feel mm. like this VP is like really important or this guy is really important. But in reality, the higher up you call, the easier it is. I agree with you. I called a VP of a 1,500 company, 1,500 employee company. That's huge in the DOD space, okay? No, 11,500, not, not 1,500, my mistake. I didn't know he was so big and he was the most chilled out guy on the on the planet. I mean, I read the background information. I was like, dude, you're a moron for calling this guy. I'm sorry. You're an idiot for calling this guy. <laughs> well, you, you know, I, I look back at the people that I have that I, that I keep contact with. My, quote, friends that I've never mm. seen, that I've known for a long time. Most of them are VPs and presidents. And, okay, and but was, you were a VP yourself. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it, it's just funny that they, they are at that, that level. And then when I... 
I called him and I said, okay, what do you got? And we're talking. It's harder to get the people under them. Okay, so hold on a second. Uh, there was the issue. You said uh, you don't want to be direct, but you say you can call business development uh, people now, uh, Mario, and you also said yeah. you're a very direct guy. So yeah. are you direct on your, your business? I'm development? definitely direct on my tell business us, development. Tell us how you do your, what your business development is. Okay, hey, this is, uh, hey, is that Ernie? Huh? Ernie, you're going to hate me. This is, can I have 30 seconds of your time? This is a sales call. Sure. You want to hang up now? No, no, keep talking. Cool. So thank you for your time. So let's start this conversation. And I start blur, blurring, out, blurring out my pitch. No, let's hear it. Then I would rather not talk about my pitch. Oh, online. okay. 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 I got it. But why, yeah. do you say, why do you say it's a sales call instead of a, I'm a, I'm a headhunter? I'm a, I, it's a sales call. I'm trying to sell our recruiting services. Yeah, but the sales is just vague. I mean, you might be wanting to sell them. I, I normally, I normally, listen, I normally word it as a recruiting sales call. Okay. Okay. So I know That's it's it. a recruiting okay. sales that call. That makes yeah. sense to me. Okay. It's, what do it's you very think simple, direct. Ernie, Ernie we're, we're honest here. I like, I, I think he's a great speaker. Okay. A great communicator. I want to know you. what you think. Do you think that was a little too direct? Because you said. Not, not really. You're, you're really trying to get to the point with him. And trying, you know, and, and the biggest thing to ask him, like, and, and if they pick up the phone, you're not interrupting them. <laughs> the question then becomes, can you keep them on the phone? Exactly. And that's that, that's where the art comes in. Is he making sure. a mistake? Do you think by saying I need thirty seconds? I think that's a good thing to say. But do Woody? But you? No, no. Actually, yeah, let me, me rephrase that. I say, would you let me have thirty seconds, or you want to hang up now? You give me thirty seconds, and you can slam the phone down on me. And 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 there's, that induces a laugh. There, there's that part where people say, is, "Is this a good time to talk to you? Do you have thirty seconds?" But then the other part of it is to make it in such a way that I'm only going to. This is only going to take thirty seconds. Let me tell you why I'm calling. See, that's why I say you can just give me thirty seconds, and then you can slam the phone down on me. Yeah. Everyone laughs for that line. Yo, Rich, the What's man up? who taught cold calling to us. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Well, you Richie, know, I was quoting. I was quoting you left it left and right here because because uh, Mario said that uh, he uh, when he first came he was uh, comfortable making uh, cold calls to people he wanted to recruit, but not for business development. I remember now he told told us about that before, and you told us why people are afraid to make. They want something. One you're giving, one you're asking, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, but and you always say there's no difference between one or the other. Am I right about that? Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's, your, it's all in your mind. Okay, did you, you didn't hear, did you hear his call? His, his call do your call, do your initial opening call for Rich and hey, I Rich. want Rich to critique it. Okay, Go ahead. so let me start. Is that Rich? Hey. Rich, this is gonna take 30 seconds. Would you wanna, this is a recruiting sales call. You wanna hang up now? I'll give you me 30 seconds. don't sound the same. Come then, on, Rich Okay, is, it happens. Rich it takes is time. big on your tone. Rich says, right, don't right, sound right, like right, you don't right. give a shit about me. Yes, you know, have some energy, okay? You don't have it now. Would you, I asked for 30 seconds. You didn't even give me 10. <laughs> Go <laughs> ahead, start again. Okay. Is that Rich? the top. It is. Rich, you're gonna hate me. This is a sales, Call, would you want to give me 30 seconds or you can slam the phone down on me? Uh, you know, <clears throat> sure, I'll give you 30 seconds. All right. So most of the leaders we speak to in this space, blah, 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 blah. That's okay, my pitch. That's his, what I wanted you to create his opening thing. What, yeah. He didn't do it. He did it well before. He didn't do it that great this time. What do you Rich think? Is the, Rich is the god of recruiting. I'm a bit nervous. What do you think? He's intimidated. He's intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah. point. If you listen to like all the guys, like there's a great podcast. I think I mentioned to you, like 30 minutes to President's Club, which is like where where Mario's is directly at him. You know, that's a, all these like big, you know, account, you know, sales, you know, business development guys. What's it called again? What's it called? 30, 30 MPC. 30 MPC. That dot com. Yeah. President's Club. Yeah. Great, 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 great podcast. The, no offense to this, you know, webinar webcast. That is the best podcast for sales like okay. literally mario's is like like dead on um for what they kind of tell you to do it's available on spotify is it not too yeah uh, yeah i listen to it like every morning at the gym it's great. i just have i'm gonna compliment rich i posted uh we already did your ad for the contest okay okay <laughs> uh even with you not here but i posted uh last year's uh video i don't know if you watched it for mm -hmm. uh i said it was michael g cox's birthday give him a free gift and so i posted the uh pitch 
for, that I did last year on the show for you and him. And you didn't have that beautiful map uh, as your decoration before, which is a blank wall. I mean, the map, but in Matt, it's all the places we've been and then where you want to go, your favorite. It's like actually, it's more yeah. than just a map. He's just gone all out on the decoration of his <laughs> office. So I just want everyone, I want everyone. Big spender. You no, know, okay. So there you go. Richie Rich, super rich. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> we had Stephen O'Donnell here. I said he's going to be the guest now since we don't. And, and, he, and, and he hung up. <laughs> he, he left. <laughs> Animal, I think he did a Batman. Because well, whatever. Okay, I'm going to ask Rich uh, and, and Ernie the question I asked uh, Mario before. Uh, can you uh, talk in a monotone and uh, be a very successful recruiter? R Mario said no. I said yes, because uh, I've uh, heard of someone who was a great recruiter who was a cold fish. Rich, yeah. you first. I know Rich, it says one of the keys to success is putting oomph and energy I mean, into your call. Listen, if you're calling actuaries, you can't sound like you're, you know, you know, Bozo the Clown. You can't be Mr. Energetic, but you know, <laughs> you got to be, you know, a little monotone. I, listen, are you, so you can, can you be successful? Yes. Do I, would I want to do it that way? Hell no. Hold on. Are you implying that you sound like Bozo the Clown when you call your sales Sometimes reps? I do, but listen, my pitches aren't that smooth. I mean, it's just getting through it and getting people over the hurdle of saying, sure. Like, like, uh, like Mario's, it was like a, you know, uh, it, you know, uh, what's that? An interrupt. I forgot the term. But, pattern interrupt. A pattern, pattern interrupt. interrupt. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I mean, so it makes you say, yeah, sure, of course. You know, I mean, that's what makes it good. I don't deliver it so well, quite frankly. So I just kind of do it the old school way. And it works yeah. for me. Baloney. Okay, Ernie, to you. <laughs> well, you got to be yourself. Bingo. The only, the only time you change that if you're, I guess, in the mortuary business. <laughs> <laughs> How can Rich say bingo hey. when he already told us a dozen times you got to put some energy in? Well, you put it, you're right. It. I think you do. But you know but what? That, there's, his, there's a lot of ways that work. But that's his personality. That's his personality. No, he was prescribing it for everybody. Rich, okay? as oh, you know, sure the no, no, animal, no. But, sees but, it in black and white. Yeah, exactly. There's a, difference, yeah. there's a difference between knowing your personality and having energy in your voice. And, and, then, yeah. and also, if you're going to, you know, teach people, you'll say, yes, animal, you should be monotone. That okay. would be the best way to sell. You guys know the comedian Stephen Wright, the oh, deadpan voice, yeah, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go to Stephen O'Donnell, okay? Steve, can you welcome be, back. can you, welcome back, yeah. Uh, can you be a successful recruiter and talk, have one of those monotone voices? Or do you have to add a little oomph and energy deliberately? We got Rich talking out of both sides of his mouth. Okay, so <laughs> I want to know you make the deciding vote. Well, you, you you mentioned Stephen Wright, and Stephen Wright is just as successful a comedian with his deadpan voice as others who are really animated. And I think you can get different types of recruiters, different types of markets. No, nope, you can't say that. Apparently, Animal's going to yell at you now, right? Yeah, and, and and by I the way, of of dead... I think you're afraid of him. Deadpan <laughs> comedians. Uh, but has let's let's, 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 let's okay, listen first... to Stephen. Is he monotone? You know what? That's a good question. He's kind of. Uh, oh, he's, hold on a second. He's, he's got that. He's like he's got he's got that Cooney voice or whatever they call it. Like he's, he's in the bar singing. Like, he's got a James Bond, Bond voice, man. Come he did. On. He does have that uh, James Bond. I pointed it out yeah, earlier. So, so the, the thing is, is to, to me, when I hear my voice back, it sounds really monotone. But when Americans hear my voice, they think it sounds, you know, uh, like a, a, a Sean, Connery. Sean Connery. They, they hear Connery. the accent. They hear the accent. accent. James Bond. But, yeah, but the thing, is, the thing is, everyone here speaks yeah. like me. So, you know, it, this is a regular Glasgow accent. Okay, but you don't sound flamboyant or anything like that. Okay? Steven, Steven, no, do you sound flamboyant? Do you, Steven, do they, when they ask you what's your name, do you say O'Donnell, Stephen O'Donnell? Yeah, yeah. No, I say, <laughs> I say, oh, the name's O'Donnell, Double O'Donnell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> James O'Donnell, Stephen O'Donnell. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, license to thrill. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know what? Here's a, here's the thing. Uh, this guy, this professor, wrote a, an article. I thought it was very good, and he said these companies that are laying off people, it's a bad policy. They're going to lose money because they're laying people off. Uh, and they're just doing it because they're all copycats. Just like I've seen people say, oh, Elon Musk is laying people off. That's what we're going to do too. They, nobody needs people. Can, can, a, can a recruiting firm read an article like that 
and call a company and say, you should be hiring people now. They're laying off their good people. You can hire them and the salary you're going to pay them until the market picks up is a good investment. Otherwise, when the market picks up, you're going to be competing with these same companies again to hire those same people you laid off a few months ago. Could anybody have the the guts to argue with a business, you call up, I want your 30 seconds. No, I'm not hiring anybody. You are making a mistake, sir. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> and, you know, for sure, you don't say so. Adam, yeah. most of these companies that are laying off are hiring at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's what, what happens is you lay off and the people you don't want to lose walk out the door. There you go. Yeah. You I, let, me tell you, let me tell you what I used to do. When companies were laying off, I would go to the factory gates or I would go to the nearest pub and I would buy around the drinks and uh, and hoover up as many candidates as I could. So people who were being laid yeah, off. Yeah, but did you have somewhere to put them? That's those the question. Weren't, those weren't VPs, right? <laughs> no. Uh, no, no it, it, they were I wouldn't always have places to put they them. Were, they I, weren't uh, factory workers. They were technical guys. Well, yeah, they'd be plastics engineers and project engineers and production okay. managers. Okay, okay engineers. but this is what the guy said. He said, did Meta overhire? Probably. But yeah. is that why they're laying people off? Of course not. Meta has plenty of money. These companies are all making money. They're doing it because other no. companies are doing it. He says layoffs do not cut costs. There's many instances of uh, laid off employees being hired back as contractors with companies paying the contracting firm and other the recruiters. It's costing them more to keep the same co uh, company uh, people there. Okay. Uh, you know, excuse you know, me, Animal. animal. I, I think Sorry, the, the question, excuse me, Mario, the question is more, what effect does that have on the recruiters? When people start hear the word layoff, everybody goes freaking out. Mm -hmm. Like someone yells fire and everyone's saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do next year? It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. And and people start freaking out. And that that's kind of interesting. Also, the people that get laid off, the recruiters that get laid off, I just always ask myself, why don't they just start their own business? They have all the tools. They have all the things. Just keep, go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. But how, long did, take, how long did it take you to go off on your own? How long did it take me? Yeah. 20 years. There you go. <laughs> That's <laughs> why people uh, get nervous. But they, he had a big job. Exactly. He was a VP. He's a lawyer with a VPHR job. Okay. He yeah. wasn't just a, a recruiter. But, you know. but, but, it, but it's a decision to say, you know what? I have nothing now. I used to be a big dog. Now I ain't crap to nobody. My reception isn't even calling me back. The people who mm -hmm. need to kiss your butt aren't even dealing with you anymore. So <laughs> Some you people get out of just by nature are born employees. They'll never work for themselves. And, exactly. And you can give them all the opportunities to do it. And they just won't, they won't take the risk. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear these people say, I don't, you know, I've been a recruiter and I, ha I don't have a job and I've been looking for like six months. Well, while you're looking, so open up your own shop. So I have a question to ask you, Ernie. Now, if they are such good recruiters, can they reverse the search, reverse their own styles of recruiting and contact hiring managers for a job? No, they're not willing to do that. <laughs> that means okay. how the hell are they good recruiters? Here's a segue. Hey guys, you just take a list. Yeah, sorry. This guy, no, no, don't be sorry. And I, it's nice that he defers to your age and seniority all the time. If, if it's you and him talking, Mario defers to Ernie, okay? But anyway. <laughs> Even okay. to you, Animal, and to Rich and to Steven. You guys are older yeah, than me, you smarter don't have than me. To. Okay, you, you can talk right over me like everybody That's else. The problem in today's generation. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, this guy, no respect. <clears throat> yeah, okay. This guy said, he said, the reason you're scared of commission-only jobs is that you don't believe in your skills. If you were 100% confident in your skills, a no-cap performance role would be a match made in heaven for no. you. Can I tell you why that's nonsense? Why? Commission-only jobs are asking you to invest in someone else's company. Uh, you're investing your time uh, in someone else. You, there might be more better commission for you, but they're getting you rent-free. Uh, whether you fail or succeed. And uh, if you wanted to be in business for yourself, then you're commission only. Uh, yeah, commission that's what we're talking about here. That's yeah, the context yeah, exactly. we're talking about, working for yourself, okay? Yeah, you're for someone else on commission only. No, no, is, but, but what Ernie business. said is, if you're a recruiter who's laid off, stop crying and open your own firm and work on commission only, just like yeah. you know contingent recruiters do, or maybe yeah. for some kind of retainer. I, I don't know. What between, do you think? Us, between us guys, I expect... Most recruiters out there will have a bit of uh, extracurricular recruiting going on. 
uh, where they're making placements so. and getting getting fees under the table. I said, uh, yeah, he might have a point. I don't, so when, I don't when you're when you're looking to leave or uh, you're being asked to leave, you've already got a passive income on the on the go where you're you're making placements with the odd client once in a while that's uh, that's going directly to uh, to to your shadow business. Here's okay. a here's a, a question for Rich. Okay, are you still awake, Rich? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just doing some work. Okay, no, that's okay. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt work. you. Do, pay attention. I don't want to interrupt him. But yeah. here's here's the thing: is do you make sure that your compens sales compensation plans are not hinky, you know, uh, tricky? Okay. And he says, the guy says, I worked with a CEO who deliberately created a six-page compensation plan with fifteen clauses that started, "You will not be paid for." Or in the case of you hit the ceiling, he says some companies will add clauses to a contract that allow them to get out of paying full compensation to a sales rep who goes way over quota. Yeah, so, it, it, so listen, it, it, long winded question. The the end of the day is every company has a clause in there that they can, they can do something stupid, and for, you're not going to get around it. But there's ones that are that, the ones that have explicit like. If, if you close the deal on a Tuesday, you don't get paid, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would never work on those searches if I, if I find out about it. Um, How I mean, do I you find out? That's a question. Sometimes it's late into the process, you know? I mean, you know, you, you can only ask so many questions at the beginning, you know, and you get to ask stuff along you, the way you go, you learn. And you know, I, used to have a condition, I, I used to have a condition in my contract with recruiters that worked for me uh, that said, if for whatever reason, circumstances conspire against you and you haven't earned at least 40 percent of the fees that you brought in this year i will top it up to 40 percent. you do the so, reverse yeah, yeah 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 but rich why can't you just say look are there any uh caps on on because commission you, you ask that question but they don't tell you like i'll ask if there's a cap or things like that but it, like to get all the intricate details of the benefits of the um comp plans of the commission plans of you know, I'll go through the different stages of the commission if there's a cap, things like that. But to get all the difference, like the nuances of how you hit there, there's so many hidden tricks to it. Like I told my, I mean, my clients are startups too. If you have a six page comp plan, there's something wrong. It, it literally, your if you need a slide rule to figure out your comp plan, there's something wrong. If they can't just tell me it's a flat 10% or 15%, there's generally something wrong with the plan. It shouldn't be that difficult to figure out. Expect, I'm having this big fight with a client of mine now. I love that. It's a VP I've known for years. I love the guy. But his CEO is insane. And I'm like, yeah. dude, we lose one more candidate. I'm done. You know, because this is a waste of time because your plan sucks. And, and uh, Rich, I was going to ask you, you know, in, in the food industry, I've, I've talked to some people where they were in sales and they did really well. And then the following year comes and they're hit with, we're going to split your territory now. Yep. Increase and, your quota, and, and, cut and, your territory, change your manager, all sorts of fun. Yeah, and they, they split the territory and they're, they're upset because they said, now my commission's all gone. I earned it. And they took it away. Yep. Does that happen yeah. with you guys, with your well, niche? I mean, they don't, they, well, you can't lose, and you shouldn't lose your commission. Like in, this, in most states, <clears throat> if you close the deal and you leave or whatever, you can't like even if you left the company, if you close that deal, the contracts are signed, you're owed that money. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean you're you're a lawyer, so you you know, but they should, you know, a lot of companies get tricky and they don't call it commission, they'll call it a bonus, they'll call it a uh, you know, a spiff or something. And you basically so that way they don't have to pay it if they don't want to. Yeah, but it, these these are situations where the the person's still staying with the company. Well, that's a dumb person. And then, and then they're splitting their territory. Yeah, but that happens. Well, the splits happen all the time. Yeah. Like territory as your company grows, you're going to get less territory, less accounts, and yeah. you know generally your quota goes up. So that's and then these companies wonder why people leave. Okay, but yeah, that's then, so let me ask a question. Why would anyone if uh, put a cap on commission when the per, it's going to discourage a person from doing great because work? Because they're, they're they're not sales driven companies. They're engineer driven companies. They're cheap. They're stupid, and they're they don't fun. look at the bigger. And, they don't look at the pic the big picture. They're a finance-driven company, or they're they're owned by an investment. Give Mario group. a chance. He wants to say uh, something. I'm sorry. Exactly. They are not the guys who are making the decision. Don't know how business really works, and they don't it's know how sales companies. works. Yeah, they're yeah, they're, 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 they're bean yeah. counters. Yeah, sorry. they're engineers or finance guys that are controlling it from the distance, and they don't understand. Like 
like i mean i just i wrote this article not long ago it was like about how these first sales guys you bring in you know like again my, my stuff is startups the first sales guys you bring in you want these guys to be your enlightened sales guys the you know the studs the commandos the guys taking the beach those guys cost more they're taking more risk and you know you're going to sell something that hasn't been sold before why would you pay that guy the same as you're going to pay your employee number 15 16 8 17 Second yeah. thing, one more thing that comes into picture is when uh, the VPs or the CEOs or whoever sees the commission being paid to the sales guy, they just think he's a sales guy. Yeah. They don't realize that they are freaking eating because of that guy's work. Yeah. They don't get you know, it. I, yeah, they, they, this whole concept of the cap <clears throat> commission is the biggest EDSC done by any startup or any company. Yeah. I mean, Why no, do you want to cap the commissions? Yeah. No, there's Sorry. no salesperson should work on a capped plan, period. Yeah. There's no, but I mean, you like, said everybody's so, got it. You said there's no, no escape. That's not what I said. I said, no, but they have everyone's got th different clauses in their contract. I never said they all have a capped plan, but most contracts basically say the company can change the plan at will. Yeah, and they do. That's what, and that's what bad managers do. They do. That's yeah, why most bad, bad, bad managers do that. And that's and why they do so, listen, so I, I talked to this lady once. She closed the OnStar deal for Motorola to GM, all right? It was a $1.8 billion deal. And this was like, you know, 20 some odd years ago, right? When it OnStar and it was like, whatever it was, 20 in the late 90s, early 2000s, 1.8 billion. I mean, you should be able to retire and have a Cadillac every year for the rest of your life at that kind of commission. She was capped at $180,000 on a nearly $2 billion deal. She made not even 200 grand. Like, I mean, literally she should have made like a hundred million dollars at least, you know? Mm. And she, I'm like, how the, and she stayed at this company. I'm like, how the hell did you stay at Motorola for this long? It turns out she was like, she was married to a Detroit Lions like uh, lineman. <laughs> so she didn't care at the time. She didn't realize, I'm like, you could have, she literally could have enough money to buy the Lions at the time. Okay, we, we got that story. Oh. Hey, some, I have a question, mm -hmm. a practical question. I'm going to ask Stephen first, okay, if he's still uh, listening. Uh -oh. Okay, if you have a candidate, a sales candidate, and that person is interested in the job, but says, I'm not taking it because they've got a, a sales cap, would you argue, just like uh, Rich and Mario said, it's irrational, would you go back to your client and say, you are making a mistake? You don't understand how business runs. Would you do that, Stephen? Well, the job of a recruitment consultant is to consult. So you got to push back sometimes and and tell them a, a mistake is being made. They'll make their own decisions for their own business. If they say, well, that's what we do, then you have yeah. to ask, well, why is that the case? And uh, uh, is there a bigger picture that you should be looking at? But yeah, you should you should do that. But equally, if 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 a, if an employer says we only hire uh, people with this contract, and uh, we've had an experience in the past that dictates why we do the things that we do then isn't it's, it's their privilege to to do that but they're going to miss out on good candidates anybody else pressing back does anyone ever have a chance to change the company policy i don't i don't think so that's not what I. it, it happens i mean it, again minor smaller companies <laughs> but it happens i mean some companies like I, my client right now they're like nope we're going to pay these shitty these shitty uh commission plans out that's what we're doing you know, which actually I shouldn't say. They're actually talking to a guy for a final today, and they rewrote the plan for the guy. It still the plan still sucks, but they try. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, but what we hear for isn't it true the uh, that we hear from Rich all the time? These guys are so stupid. Okay, <laughs> I don't hear you saying. You know what? These guys are so smart. They stretched to get this great candidate. No, you know what they did? So they basically said the commission rate started at like four percent, which already is garbage, and for a young company. And so what they did was, all right, we'll give the guy, and it was a four, started at 4%, 6%, 8%, 8% for three, and then you get paid over the next, you get paid for year two and three in a deal. And then the quota was like, uh, like a million bucks. All right. So now they're like, all right, we're going to give you the same $150,000 salary. But we're going to make your quota 2.75 million. And, but we'll give you 10% instead of 4%. So they basically took, took you know, increased everything 2.75%, you know, 2.75 times. You know, but now it makes this quota impossible to get to, and it's gonna, you'll never get to accelerators. Mm -hmm. Anybody know. else comment? Anybody, Ernie, wanna say anything? All Anybody? I, no? All I can say is, in my experience, that you can submit somebody, your <clears> job <throat> is to get them to talk to them, and they fall, and if they fall in love with them, they're willing to do things. 
The and, honey trap. Yeah, and and <laughs> the you know, but the, if they really really like them, they'll really really try to get them. Some will, some won't. And this what don't you see in this current market? The CEOs are like line in the sand, and if the VP of sales or the hiring manager doesn't want to put their neck on the line and say this is the guy I want, come hell or high water, CEO is going to say no every time. In this but, current go, but going back, going back to what they were saying about can you change somebody's mind? A lot of that is a conversation you've had with the owners of the company, the the, the executives, to actually know what state they're in economically, financially. And and sometimes they'll tell you, you know, we're in a tight spot and we can't do it. And other times you'll ask them, hey, so you're not making any money? And, and this guy can bring you a lot more. Yeah. And, it all, it all, and, and that kind of conversation is what you want to have with whoever. Is, well, is okay. Kind of it's a, I, 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 my vote from listening to all of you is that there's almost no chance of getting a company to do what you think is smart in order to get a good uh, candidate, okay? And, and that's because that's because you're not sitting there at the table with them every day. Exactly. And you're and you're ta- if you're not talking, you're talking to a VP of sales or CRO. Not now. You got to talk to HR. You got to talk to. It's like I mean, getting them to change a comp plan is like an act of Congress. It's it's yeah. it, it, it's, it's and, you know yeah. and you don't like, know what the other people are making, and which could yeah. throw it all off. Which again, for sales guys, should be immaterial. But well, uh, that's a little so slightly different. You say, listen, I called, I talked to twenty people already, and they're all earning more than you're offering, right? You, that's a, it's a little different. To that's say, just I'll a search you just wave goodbye to that. Yeah, but I mean, if you're if you're if you're paying everybody a hundred thousand, and this guy wants one hundred and twenty, yeah, you're going to get twenty people pissed off, and you got to raise your own salary, so it's going to cost okay, you. Okay, but Rich, Rich but, said, walk away. That's what Rich yeah, said. Well, I mean, said, well, well I mean, from this can, from this candidate. He's not the right guy for you. No, but no. That's what the market well, is. No, but if everyone, if, else, if everyone else is making more, like what? why do you want to work on a search paying the lowest the, common denominator? I, I agree with you. You know, and then, yeah. and these companies, it's like, all right, you're going to pay this guy more? Well, maybe he's better. Maybe the rest of your team sucks. Maybe you should increase your quality of, of your team and, you know, pay a little bit more. I mean, sometimes you know, these companies are underpaying the market and, you know, they need someone to come in and shake things up a little bit. And quite frankly, it's, it's no one's business what everyone's what you're making, is it? They shouldn't be telling everyone. So, or, or a lot of times they don't want to get rid of the underperformers either. Because it makes them look good. Well, maybe the you know if you got a bunch of C players and you're a B player, now you look like an A. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, while I've got Stephen here, I just want to pit him against <laughs> Rich. Okay. <laughs> Rich is the master. Stephen, are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rich is the master, although he'll deny it. Of walk yeah. away. You just heard it. From unreasonable clients, don't waste your time with people who aren't, you know, gonna gonna hire. Uh, at least they're giving cues. There's red flags. Are you also saying, you know, one of the best things you could do for your business is walk away from people who don't seem to be great clients? Uh, would you agree with Rich about that? Uh, Rich can uh, edit what I said if he wants to. Okay. Yes, yes. And can I give you a very recent example? Go ahead. Of, uh, of telling of of firing a client. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's not a recruitment client, but uh, I had a sponsor for the Noras uh, just uh, two weeks ago. They were going to be the sponsor of the VIP lounge. And uh, over over weeks, we had negotiated exactly what they would get for their deal and, and, and you know, what the cost was going to be. I finally met him at a conference and we shook hands on the deal and that was it. It was going to happen. Uh, cut to three weeks, four weeks before the event. Uh, and uh, and he gave me a, uh, sent an email to me saying, "Oh, I'd, I'd completely forgotten about this, uh, and, uh, and now we don't have enough time to get prepared for the event. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do it." Uh, so emails went back and forward, uh, but it was, it was very apparent, very immediately, that he wasn't going to be for bringing around for talking around. So I barred him from the event. I, t- I told him to get lost. And, uh, yeah, but that's the opposite. He got rid of you. Okay. You didn't, no, no, you no, didn't no, no, walk no. away from him. No, but it, well, okay. Okay. If you like. But no, you but punished I, him for walking I punished away. Him. You I, said, I said, I said, I said you, you're, buddy. You're, not, okay. you're, you're now no longer welcome. Don't even come as a guest. Okay. You can't come. Probably uh, but, the final question. Okay. Yes. For everybody. I, w- I, w- I would say tell clients to get noted if they're being unreasonable. Okay. Oh, wide open. Okay. This guy said, if you've got two identical candidates and one works for a big brand, hire the other one. She's got the harder job. She works harder to be equal. Anybody want to take that on? 
don't hire from a big brand recruiter. Don't hire a big brand recruiter. They've they've got you know they're sailing on on the on the name. Anybody recruiter? Who cares? No one cares about the company name. No one cares about the recruiting company. The recruiters. Yeah. Are right. No, it's like they don't know whether you're for. They're talking about corporate recruiters when you're with uh, uh, you know uh, Amazon or or uh, Facebook yeah, yeah. or something as opposed to no name oh. company, a mid level working company. for me versus working for. Uh, for Amy at Amazon or Microsoft, wherever she's Amy, on. Amy, Amy sneered. Oh, now you're in trouble. Now you're in trouble. Yeah, she, she's not here. Okay. <laughs> you haven't been here in a while. So you got to get throw her in. Come on. Yeah, I should, I should invite her. She likes like, to come in and fight. In. Although she's much more pugnacious than when I, she was always feisty. Now she's a uh, bitter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's because she fights so much on LinkedIn every day, right? Okay. No, no. Would you, if you had two recruiters earning the same money, and, and these are corporate recruiters. Oh, see ya, Mario. If you had, if they're corporate recruiters and you had two of them earning the same money, one was for a big brand, one was for a company, a substantial company, but not one anyone really knew. Okay. I think it makes sense. Don't hire the big brand. That person has a name that's supporting them. Okay. Anybody else want to well, agree you, or yeah, disagree with me? You, you, have, to, you have to look at what kind of support that position has. If they got the sourcers and they got this and they got that, then the person that you're hiring from the big company is used to staying in their lane. When you got a smaller company, they're used to doing anything and everything. Okay, you mean whether the they have a lot of support staff. I've heard that about salespeople. Don't hire a rainmaker from a company where there's people doing everything for yeah, them. Hiring a guy from Oracle is not going to succeed at or IBM. It's not going to succeed at a company, at a $5 million company more often than not. They don't have, I mean, they, they're, they're gonna go off their network. They haven't cold called in forever. They, they're they used to getting a meeting because they have a big name. They're not used to getting a meeting because you know of their hard work. And, and the culture of their, and their culture of their company is to stay in their lane. Yeah. You, you yeah. start doing something else that someone else is doing, people get upset. So okay, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you mean by stay in your lane. Well, well you, gotta, you, you got your very, you got, this is your scope of responsibility. You can't go over here because okay. you're gonna piss off Peter. You can't go over here because you're gonna piss off Mary. You know. Anybody? Keep, I didn't. I didn't ask. I will throw it open. Anybody got an issue they want to raise before the show's over? Or say, it looks. As I've seen something this week and it really pissed me off. Or I loved it. I thought it was a great idea. No. Nothing. <laughs> I got lots of. Actually, you came. You came. You came uh, late, Rich. But I've got some stuff where you actually have opinions. I'll just save it for another time. I, 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 thank never, our... I never. I never knew Rich of having opinions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was about guarantees. He was. Uh, so that he came out yeah. very clearly on that. But I'll talk about it next time. <laughs> I want to thank. I want to thank tatech.org. Am I right about that, Stephen Absolutely. O'Donnell? Yeah, yeah. Yes. See, if you have a domain name that is easy. It's good. He could tell me at a party and I would remember it the next day. TATech.org. And okay, he did it in a monotone voice, too. Yeah. That, okay. I believe if I, I would do better if I had James, a monotone James voice. Bond, Nobody James likes Bond the way I talk. <laughs> Foodindustryrecruiter.com. Raise your hand. Cornerstonesearch.com. Go to coldcallrecruiter.com <laughs> and vote for cornerstonesearch.com. We'll do another plug for him next week. Thanks, everybody. I enjoyed having you here. Thanks, Bye. -bye. Guys.